Blissey challenge you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you. I challenge you. Pause for dramatic effect. I dare you to choose one of your favorite ponies. Earth, Unicorn, Pegasus, or Alicorn. Choose now. What the fuck? Nah, I'm just kidding. Seriously, how can you choose? They are all amazing in their own right. Nonetheless, this is one of the greatest things about being a brony, isn't it? You have four choices of pony you can choose from as to represent your original character. And while it's easy to tell each other apart, one must ask the question, what really separates these four ponies from each other? Well, other than their obvious body traits. Any fan can choose to love a Pegasus, they can fly. Or an Alicorn, they have the best of magic and flying. Or an Earth Pony, who are down right to Earth, literally. And the Unicorn, who specializes in magic. But seriously, what makes each one of these ponies stand out in the Milo Pony Friendship is Magic show? Let's start by addressing the least popular by Brony standards of OCs, the Earth Pony. Why are they the least popular as an OC for Brony fans? Well, in all honesty, even I am a hypocrite when I say I'm not an Earth Pony OC myself because they can't fly nor do they use magic of any sorts. However, they do have a specific trait that are either not obvious enough or just overlooked. For instance, in the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic show, it is seen on several occasions that Applejack, the element of honesty, is a hard worker apple bugging on an apple farm. Most ponies aren't seen doing this other than for the apple family itself. Does this mean all Earth ponies are associated with farming in general, though? No. Nor does it mean that only Earth ponies understand more about farming or the land. As it is seen on different times, some unicorn ponies specialize in growing roses and flowers as a talent in Ponyville. In fact, there is no ground level that Earth ponies are the only ones restricted to manual ground labor. Any pony can pull a plow if they are able to, or do construction if they have the knowledge or talent. So if Earth ponies aren't specifically involved with the Earth, then what do they have to stand out? Well, it is argued with some Bronies that they are stronger and ground faster than a Pegasus or a Unicorn, or Alicorn for that matter, that they are able to jump higher or even have an extra sense to know when something's going to happen. Though we only see a sixth sense ability with Pinkie Pie and the newest character from Season 4, Cheese Sandwich. It's not enough to go on. So based off the research I've done on Earth Pony history, to stand with my opinion points to the following. Earth ponies are stronger and faster ground-wise on a higher level than other types of ponies. I came to this conclusion based off the evidence that came from Generation 1, which an example is just without a doubt can't be denied in my eyes. An example, in one piece of footage from the first generation movie, My Little Pony, Attack of the Smooths, one of the ponies, an earth pony of green color, a blue unicorn, along with a Pegasus pony, are challenged with a goal to rescue three humans from an evil flow of smooths. I'll catch up to ya! attention. <laughs> it's clear that the Pegasus Pony has a clear advantage of flying and is able to rescue the last human, Megan, who was stranded. But what are the other two ponies? The blue unicorn known as Fizzy wasn't confident in making that large jump over a ravine. Rather than chance it, the second human girl who was riding her was told to jump on the Earth Pony's back instead so she could teleport to the other side. But what clearly is displayed here is not only did the Earth Pony carry two humans on her back, she also clearly made the huge jump with relative ease. Based off what I could tell from the image displayed, and a rough estimation on how tall the humans are on Ponyback, that ravine had to be at least 40 to 45 feet long. 
For any Olympian horse, that's ridiculous of a jump by itself, let alone with two passengers. Though this talent may never ever be displayed in the newest My Little Pony Friendship is Magic show, due to there are no humans in the show, it is displayed with some ponies like Applejack, with her strength in apple bucking, to the taxi ponies from the fourth season, who clearly are strong and speedy when it comes to land. We may never know exactly for sure, but in my opinion, Earth ponies would be considered having strength and speed on their side as a general trait. So, can I be any more obvious with unicorns here? Even in the first generation, it was displayed that unicorns could teleport themselves short distances, maybe even help to cure ailments. However, the use of unicorn magic from the older episodes wasn't used as much as it was in the Friendship is Magic show. In the newest show, unicorns can teleport, teleport objects, levitate objects, and even perform spells like aging or growing plants, travel back in time, and oh my Celestia, their magic can be even used as a weapon! It is also noticed that when it comes to society, unicorns are considered the high class or rich out of the Earth and Pegasus ponies. Not to say this is throughout the entire My Little Pony society in general, but I can't help and notice that sense of irony. Is it because unicorns use magic that they think themselves highly? Or is it because the fact they are magically gifted, like the alicorns, who are considered the rulers of the Ponyverse? But we'll get into that later. But one thing is definitely for sure. In the new Pony Show, unicorns are not to be questioned on their use of magic. They are very well diverse. Even on average, unicorn citizens are able to levitate or even make their horns glow like a light bulb to some extent. What's not to love about having your own nightlight on you at all times? Now, on to the Pegasus Ponies! Since I was a huge fan of them from the start, I'd like to take the opportunity to say that Pegasus Ponies had always showed off their traits. I'm talking flying everywhere and doing crazy stunts from the first generation and onward to the current. One of my favorite scenes from The Friendship is Magic is, in fact, one of the famed six, Rainbow Dash, doing her best stunt ever! The Sonic Rain Boom! <laughs> Or in Firefly's Big Adventure, when Firefly and Megan take on Tarak by doing that death-defying double loop trick. No, it isn't. Come on, Firefly. Hold on, I'm going for the double loop again. <laughs> Kick the sky, Pegasus ponies. They are masters of the sky, no doubt about that. But there's another trait that I've begun to notice. Well, notice throughout the season after season one of Friendship is Magic. A lot of the scenes or the locations and even the animals that appear in the show seem to be Greek inspired. The original Pegasus story came from the Greek mythology to begin with, but a lot of the other mythical creatures shown in the show, as well as the buildings, seem to be Greek influenced. Take the location where only Pegasus ponies live, Cloudsdale. It is stated that only the Pegasus ponies can live there because they are the only ones who can stand on clouds. They are also the only ones who can essentially control the weather. But if you look closely, Cloudsdale strongly looks based off the Roman arenas from the days of the Gladiator. Odd, right? Though, honestly, not so odd if one were to think about it. But I wonder if we will ever see other mythical creatures throughout the show as well that are not in relation to Greek mythology. Now that I've covered the most popular of the pony choices, I can now address the more rare and slightly the most frowned upon when it comes to OCs, the Alicorn Ponies. Since the beginning of the first episode of Milo Pony, Friendship is Magic, it has been established that Princess Celestia is the ruler of Equestria and an alicorn as well, along with her sister, Princess Luna. Celestia is considered the most powerful alicorn in the land of Equestria, with the strength and responsibility to rise and lower the sun, while her sister Luna is able to rise and lower the moon as well as raise the stars too. At first, they were considered the only alicorn ponies around, till Season 2. 
That is when we were introduced to Princess Miyamore Condenza, also known as Princess Cadence. She would later become the Princess of the Crystal Empire, an alicorn who has the power to share and spread the love. Then, at the end of Season 3, we get another alicorn princess, none other than our very own Twilight Sparkle. Excuse me a second. A true, true friend, not so friend in need. A friend will be there to help them see. A true, true friend, not so friend. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to do that. Most would hate the fact that one of the main six would become an alicorn, but I'm one of those few who actually loved it, simply because it helps to represent what alicorn ponies are all about. They are an ascension of ponies after they accomplish something of great importance in their universe, which I believe revolves around the magic of harmony or friendship. Aside from their role in society, they are considered skilled in magic, are able to walk on clouds, and hold a great deal of importance when it comes to keeping the rule and peace in their society. And there you have it, folks. Did you decide on which is your favorite pony yet? Just kidding. We all know they rock. Particularly me, right? Right? Oh, I love you all regardless. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the show. Stay tuned for my next episode when I talk about my first impressions on episode 1 and 2 of season 1, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Until then, keep calm and pony on! When you meet a brand new friend, it opens up a world.